That's why we don't give enough credit to cavemen. <laughs> we really don't. We don't give enough credit to the people who came before us. I'm talking about ancient people. We have this tendency to look at ancient people and be like, oh my god, they were so stupid. Can you believe that they thought that the stars were, were gods? Okay, so let's say that you didn't learn anything in third grade from people who came before you, who, did, who, who, are, who are the ones who invented astronomy. Let's say you never interact with any of that knowledge. What would you think the stars were? Just like flying orbs? I don't know. Uh, the last part is probably absolutely true. We don't know. Because how can you make sense of something that you've never really experienced before? You can look up there and you can see these lights. But I mean, imagine if you had no understanding of astronomy or natural sciences, and yet you were trying to make sense of something like that. You know, the fact that, I mean, in fact, imagine if you had no understanding of anything. In fact, imagine if you're a baby again, <laughs> and we put you in your in, in your body right now, and we dropped you in the out, out in the you know, out in the forest and said, "All right, survive." Now, how would you do it? You wouldn't. You wouldn't, because there's not a lot of room for trial and error in, in something like that. When you have when, when we're standing on the shoulders of giants of all the people that came before us. It's easier for us to look at the stars and go, oh my god, it's so obvious that those are balls of plasma. And we'll say stuff like that. And then if I ask the same group of people, so what's plasma? Can you explain it to me? It, it's like star stuff. <laughs> In other words, we know, we know enough of the things that are told to us, bless you, to, to know what they are. But we don't really understand what they are. We know what they are, but we don't understand what they are. And knowing and understanding are very different things. You know that electricity runs through these lights, but you don't understand it for the most part. Some people, you know, electricians probably do. But for most of us, we don't understand it. We just know it. And again, there's two very, very different things. Um, I, for one, give a lot of respect for those cave people who came before us, who found out that there, that there are... I want to give a big hats off to the cave person who figured out poison ivy, poison oak. And that, 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 that's the stuff that makes you itch, and you shouldn't eat it. But can you imagine the poor bastard who discovered that? <laughs> imagine eating that stuff, you know, just to see what would happen. And then, and, and that's realizing, okay, so we don't want to do what that guy just did. So, you know, scratch his name off of the tribe list. You know, they, there's a lot of trial and error that went into getting us to where we are today. And we, we repaid those people who came before us by talking about how primitive they were and how stupid they were. Oh my God, they didn't know you can't eat poison ivy. I, yeah. There was a guy... What's his name? Mike McCandless, I think his name was. What was that? Uh, Into the Wild. Anybody ever see the movie Into the Wild? You read the book? Yeah. Um, if you know the story about this guy, he was a dude who just who, who gave away almost all of his possessions and just decided that he wanted to live a life of adventure and, and travel. So he went and he lived out in the forest for a while. Um, what happened to him? What happened to him? He died. He died. He died. He died. Um, he didn't learn how to do it from anybody. He went and read some books. And so he was reading these, um, these books about like certain types of berries, if I'm not mistaken. And there were these two berries that looked very much alike. And one of them can give you uh, nutrition, and the other one actually dehydrates you and makes you lose weight and everything faster, if I'm not mistaken. And um, that's why I shouldn't go out there and live in the forest, because I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken about this. But anyway, the guy ate the wrong berries. You know, he did end up killing a deer, if I'm not mistaken, but he didn't know how to preserve the meat. So he starved to death. And we have a picture of him. He did a camera with him. And he took a picture like in his last couple of days of life. Um, and all it was was that he, he was living out there. He decided to, to cross over this, um, he decided to cross over this river. Because um, yeah, I, I think he crossed over um, earlier in the year when the river was very narrow. Or was it frozen? I think it was narrow. And then later, you know, when, later in the year, when the ice further up had, had, had melted, he's like, man, I, I gotta get out of here, I'm dying. So when he realized that he was dying, he, he went to cross the river to go back to, to civilization, but the river had, had expanded, he could no longer cross it. It was too rough. So you sit there and you're like, oh my god, this guy made mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. Um, but, since we know kind of what happened to him, we can learn from him. But it took him dying for us to figure it out. That's that's the that's the uh, that's the what's the word I'm thinking of? That's kind of like the motive of human of human existence that we learn from the people who died before us. 
and then when we don't learn from them, man, that's, that's, that's the issue. Like one thing we should know is you don't invade Russia during the winter. You know? <laughs> Unless you pack some winter clothes. Napoleon failed, Hitler failed. Everybody who ever invaded Russia, but people keep trying to do it. You know, and we sit there, we shake our heads and go like, oh my God, you should know better. Because lots of people died to bring us that knowledge. You know, a lot of people died to bring us these things. And when we, when we fail to, to learn from it, that's, that's the real issue. Yeah, we should, we should give our hats off to the cave people who came before us and, and our ancestors and the, the people who, were, who didn't have the knowledge that we had. But they had the guts, and I guess, and the body count <laughs> to realize that, that uh, to bring us the knowledge that we have today. Yeah. I was wondering if the, like, I understand it, but like, towards the religion of solitude, like, how would I describe the religion? Yeah, so, so what do we think of when we think of, of a religion? Like a thing that you follow, that you like serve, I guess you could say. Yeah. And where do you feel the religion? Feel? Feel. Oh, in your heart? Yeah, you feel it in your heart, you feel it in your soul. It's the thing that you follow. Uh, oftentimes people will think of religion as like, oh, it's like blind faith. No, it's not blind faith. That's not what religion is. People say, oh, so you, so you believe in things that, you, that you, you can't see or understand. Shit, don't we all? We all do, don't we? I mean, I, I'm sure that if, if, if I can take the most atheistic person in the world and I can ask you questions, like you, you know, if, if you believe in these things that you see, I can, I'm sure I can give you example after example of things that you believe that you've never seen before, never experienced before, that you're taking on faith from things that other people have told you. So, but, but having said that, a lot of these things are things that we, we, we feel it, like in our soul. It, it, it essentially gives us a meaning and a purpose, something that animates us. Um, any of you guys are, are, are introverts. I don't mean like the, the 2022 version of an introvert where you know, you think, we think it's cool to, to be socially awkward and, and hide inside and hide behind hoodies and stuff like that. I'm talking about an actual psychological introvert. If you understand that, you under, if you are that person, you understand what it is to be, to be alone, but not lonely. To be in solitude. Some people are so extroverted, they have to be around people all the time. They're social creatures. And, we'll, and it's funny, we'll talk about both sides of those very disparagingly. Like, oh, you have to be around people because you can't handle being by yourself. Okay, so you have to be by yourself. You can't handle being around people. So, you have to grab the elbow and <laughs> hide in our closet and feel bad for ourselves. Which way should you be? Yes. Whichever those two things you are. Now, having said that, if, you can, if you're an introvert, and you can behave as an extrovert, you're going to do better in life. Because all of our, all of our, all of our research in the area shows that extroverts do better in life than introverts. And that makes sense, because if you're extroverted, you're going to talk to people, and you're going to gain some kind of, and you gain more opportunities from people than if, you're, than if you don't talk to people and you hang, hang out. Um, so at least you have the choice. You might think it's unfair, but who cares? It's just the way that it is. So you can be an introvert and you can act like an extrovert. But similarly, if you're an extrovert, once in a while you have to act like an introvert if you're going to come up with, if you're going to be a, a powerful original mind. In other words, if you're an extrovert and you hate, you, know, you, you have to always be around people, well, once in a while you have to pursue this thing of solitude to be by yourself. Just like if you're an introvert, once in a while you have to behave like an extrovert because that's where opportunities come from. And we should be able to, be, to move between these things. Not because it's a matter of like, of, of you're a better person if you do it, but just because it gives you more opportunities. If you can't be by yourself, if you can't be in solitude, then you can't develop original powerful ideas. You can't really know what you, what you personally think, which makes it very difficult to have some kind of a strong meaning orientation in your life. Something that drives you towards some goal. It's very difficult to come up with those things on your own. If you're constantly being influenced by everybody around you. And it's impossible for us to not be influenced by, by people around us, by things around us. It's impossible. You, how do you learn how to speak? Well, from people around you. How do you learn how to, how to dress? From people around you. We learn these things because we're social animals. We learn things socially. Just like as I was saying before, how do we learn not to eat certain berries? Because we're social animals and, and, and we have passed that knowledge down through these generations because some dude ate the wrong berries somewhere sometime. You ever, you ever like, look at the warning labels on things and go, why is there a warning label for that? Because we're <laughs> social creatures. Because that's how we learn not to do certain things. You ever go to the supermarket and you see the shopping cart, it's got a thing on there that tells 
tells you not to let your toddlers stand up there and dance in, the, in, the, in that top portion. Do you know why that warning is there? <laughs> I remember one time being in Vons and, and I, was, I was in line and I, I, I kind of turned around and there was a like little kid standing on one of those doing like this little dance thing. And the mom was there and looked at him and she was standing and looking at a magazine. And I thought, that's why those warnings are there. Because people have let their kids do that. And again, we can look at that today and go like, oh my God, how dumb can you be? Well, I mean, we didn't know. You know, we didn't know. It's like, how could you not know that? Man, old people can look at young people a lot and go, how can you not know X, Y, Z? How can you not know how to grow a vegetable? Oh my God, that's common knowledge. That's common knowledge to you and your generation and where you grew up. What's common knowledge is only common to the people who experience it on a daily basis. And so we should, be, we, should, we should be more generous, perhaps, with people who try to share wisdom with us and share knowledge with us. Because that's how we learn things. And there's something that's very special and intimate about knowledge. If I'm giving you knowledge, it's because I, and I mean true knowledge, it's because I want you to be better. That's different from me giving you propaganda. Or me trying to force you into doing something that, you know, that I want you to do. That's just manipulation. But if a person can give you some wisdom or some knowledge, and then leave it there, and maybe never even see them again, or maybe even never know the outcomes of it, or, or, or if they're willing to, 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 if they're willing to offend you and make you hate them by giving you some piece of wisdom, that's even better, because you know they're not necessarily trying to get something out of you. Yeah. There are those people who are just trying to piss you off, because that's what some people do. There will be people who troll you, but by and large, we should be patient with people who try to give us wisdom. It doesn't mean that they're right. But, you know, there's something that's there where they're trying to give us some, some piece of information that they probably wish that they had when they were younger. And by the way, if they had that wisdom when they were, when they were younger, how would their life have turned out? Maybe exactly the same, because that's what we do with wisdom. <laughs> we ignore it. <laughs> we, um, wisdom has to come to us sometimes many times throughout our lives. It has to come to us when we're ready to receive it. Kind of like love. Some people are just not able to receive love yet. Yeah, hopefully at some point they will. There's a lot of wisdom that you're going to hear that, you're ne that you just maybe aren't ready to, to receive it just yet. We oftentimes forget what we were like when we were younger. Some of you guys, I'm sure, hate your little nephews and nieces and brothers and sisters and cousins and stuff like that because they're like seven years old and they're so annoying. Not like you were when you were seven. Remember when you were seven and you were very, very mature, very articulate, you were watching the news, keeping up on what's happening in the world? <laughs> 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 As we get older, we're like, oh my god, I hate these kids. We might do well if we can just kind of keep in mind a little bit about who we were and, and, and be realistic about it. Um, be patient with the people who try to give us those, those advice things. Um, again, a lot of times it's for our own good. At least they think it's for our own good. And there's something sweet and nice about that. Someone who tries to do something nice for you, even if you don't, like someone gives you a knitted sweater. You're gonna wear, you're ever gonna wear a knitted sweater? Hopefully not. If you wear it, you're all clown you. But, but you should still appreciate it. It was kind of them to do that. They thought they were trying to do something nice. Keep in mind, Stalin thought he was doing something nice too, though, didn't he? So, I mean, we should, you know, write a blank check to people who are doing things that, that they think are nice. But maybe be understanding about it. Um, questions? Comments? Concerns? Comments? Yes. Did it ever happen to you that people would, you would give someone this information and they would take it in, but since someone else um, would say it to them, that like more like qualified, um, and then they take it in, would that ever activate you? Yeah. You just know that person to go uh, some, uh, some, some people, their job is to, is to sow, throw the seeds on the ground, water it, all that stuff. And then some people's uh, role in life is to, is to reap, reap the harvest that comes from it. Yeah. Um, there's an ego thing that's there where people, people want credit for this kind of stuff. I already have it in my mind. I, God, five years from now, I don't know if any of you guys are going to remember my name. You probably won't remember this class very much at all. You might remember, yeah, there was a guy who just, he talked a lot. That's what I remember. What was his name? Scadlin or Scadlin? I don't remember the name, something like that. And then, 
But there will be some things that I said this year, and there will be some things that you read this year, there will be some experiences that you had this year that you were open to because of other things that you had said or heard or whatever. And then there's going to be somebody in your life who is going to come along and say something to you, and you'll be like, oh my God, that was so incredibly wise. And I wish I'd heard that when I was younger. It's going to be something like, life is suffering. We don't get to choose not to suffer. We get to, but freedom is, is when we do choose what we're going to suffer for. Find something that makes the suffering worthwhile so we can transcend that. I'll say that to you right now, and you're hearing blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to be in like your 30s, and someone's going to say, you know, life is suffering, but if we're free, we can choose what we're going to suffer for, and that makes it worthwhile. And you'll be like, God damn, I wish someone told me that when I was younger. <laughs> but the only reason that you could receive that when you were 30 is because someone said it to you when you were 15. In other words, it prepares your mind. It prepares you for these things. My role is to, I don't, you know, my role is not to indoctrinate you. My role is not to guide you. My role is to help you get to wherever it is you want to get to and to give you a tool set to get there, which is a thinking tool set. So, to help you figure out what you want to get out of it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I don't have an ego with that stuff. I don't want to be, I don't want to walk around and be like, I have influenced many minds. Because my dad, <laughs> because I don't know what you guys are going to do. You know? I told you about my, one of my former students who, who murdered somebody a few years ago. And the last, the last, uh, the last message he ever sent me on Facebook was to tell me what a wonderful influence I was in his life. <laughs> yeah, how I really helped him see the world differently. He really <laughs> <did>. <laughs> I do it because it's in my soul. And I think that and, and I have I have incredible reverence for, for my teachers. There are people in my life who I consider to be my teachers. Like teachers. And I have incredible reverence for them. Because what is it that sets you well I mean the truth is the very thing that sets you free. They say that knowledge is power. Fucking A it is, of course it is. Of course it is. And it, of course, it depends on what kind of power you're looking for. But if you, to, to be free is to, is to think for your, is to, is to think for yourself. That doesn't mean that you have ideas that are different from everybody else. You can think for yourself and still be in the mainstream. There's nothing wrong with that. We always, we oftentimes think like, oh, if you think the same thing that other people think, you're not thinking for yourself. No, you can be thinking for yourself and still agree with a lot of people. Um, you, guys, you, guys like, you guys like the um, the, the Avengers movies? Yeah, pretty good. Entertaining? Oh, so you just think like everybody else because they're so popular. Oh, God, shut up. I don't care how many records they sold, man. Nirvana's a great band. I don't, you know, they're too mainstream. Oh, you mean they're too liked because they're too good. You like, you like stuff that's crap that nobody else likes because then you can say, look, it's my crap. And you can embrace your own crap in the bathroom. You have to come out for that and, and give me your lo-fi music, you know? Unless you like it, and that's fine for you. It's not my thing. Um... But you know, if you think if you think in such a way that everybody else thinks, it's fine, no problem with that. But I've I've had some incredible teachers, and I think it's like why do I play baseball? I play baseball because a man once took the time to teach me how to play it. Actually, it wasn't even a man. Uh, a woman once took the time to teach me how to play baseball, and then some men came along and they refined it. My mom taught me how to play baseball. She was the first one ever taught me how to play baseball. And then some people came along and they refined it, and so I, I feel that I honored their I, I honored their um, their passion by by doing by, by pursuing that thing. I think that a student repays their teacher very badly if they remain a student their entire lives, and I, I honor them by by doing it. And it isn't a matter of like oh so you just follow it. No, it's a it's a personal decision on my part to do that. Some of you will repay your teachers very well by by going off and doing great things. Some of you will repay your teachers very badly by going off and doing horrible things. Don't do that. I'd rather you go off and cure cancer or develop some cool electric battery or something like that. I don't know. You know? 
But um, what you do is entirely up to you. I just give you a skill set, hopefully a skill set, or something. Maybe that will open you up to receive something later on that's going to be useful for you for it. Oh, is the guy completely sane? Oh, yeah. He's a good dude. <laughs> uh, show of hands, if you were on that jury, how many of you would have convicted him for that? <laughs> yeah, I'd have been like, I don't think he did it. He admitted to it. Well, charge him with perjury. Maybe he's just lying about doing it. We have a video. I don't think that's him. <laughs> he's holding up his driver's license to the camera while he's saying it. Uh, no, that's not him. That's a different guy, man. I mean, <laughs> Last name is Garcia. It's a pretty common last name. Maybe you know, a completely different guy. <laughs> yeah, there's certain juries you just wouldn't want me on because I wouldn't convict no matter what. Um, or maybe you would want me on that jury. I don't know. But that's a jury that I don't think I've been convicting him on. So, others? Oh,